everyone to TFYLP episode number 46. I am Weird Wolf along with Insane Galvatron. Hello, everybody. Mirai Baby. Hi, now. And Sideburn 2. Hello. <laughs> we are broadcasting live on YouTube. Uh, via our live stream on our Google Plus Hangouts. If you are listening uh, to the live recording of this, uh, you can go on to the YouTube video. We've uh, posted a link on our Twitter and also on our Facebook page. And if uh, you're listening, you have any input, comments, suggestions, questions, uh, post them on there, and we'll do our best to uh, try to answer them if, uh, if it's pertinent to the show. And uh, we'll give you a shout out that way. And sometimes um, we'll answer them even if they're not pertinent to the show. Yeah, it all <laughs> depends on how we're feeling froggy, you know. But, uh, um, yeah, this is uh, this is something kind of new that we're trying. Uh, we're, uh, we're streaming this live uh, to try to get out there and, and interact with our listeners uh, a little bit more. But also, at the same time, uh, if you miss this live recording, then... Uh, uh, wait about a week or so, and you can download the episode on. Uh, <laughs> I'm reading reactions on the uh, on Twitter right now. Uh, you can listen to the episode on your iPod or uh, mobile device or on your computer. And uh, without further ado, we'll get into our "Ouch My Wallet" segment and uh, see what we got this week. Our "Ouch My Wallet" is. Brought to you by Captured Prey, CapturedPrey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service. CapturedPrey.com. All right, uh, Mariah Baby, you want to tell us a little bit about what you uh, picked up this week and what made your wallet say ouch? Um, I actually honestly didn't do much. Um, let me see, what did I do? Uh, I threw, oh, darn it, I don't have it. Oh, well. In the other room, uh, I threw money a couple weeks ago at some Japanese lady that gave me a doujinshi. So I was talked about that last week. It finally came in, so it's pretty cool. Um, I also finally got. Uh, uh, I like to call him Murder Bee, but he's zombie, little terracon, oh, jump, terracon bumblebee. He's really cool. Um, his uh, color scheme. I mean, black and purple is a huge thing for me. So it's like the color scheme of the Terracon Bumblebee just kind of screamed, oh my god, I have to have it. And it reminded me of Barricade from the uh, Transformers Universe MMO anyway. Um, so I was just like, I had to get him. He was cool. And then he comes with... Uh, whose is this? I can't even remember whose this is. Um, it's a recolor of, of one of the other arms microns. Is a uh, scorpion. Soundwave. Soundwave, thank you. Yeah, he's uh, but he's this really neat looking transparent purple little scorpion, and he actually like if I if I extend the tail all the way out, um, I can give him the knockout, and he actually looks kind of cool as like a substitute energon broad. Neat. Yeah, that's pretty that much. That probably look better than the one that actually came <laughs> with him. <laughs> um, other than the fact that that one's black, and I prefer the black one to this. Transparent purple one's actually kind of cool. If I if I decide to rip the tail off and give it to give it to knockout, it it works fairly well. Mm. Um, uh, Creos, I talked about those last week though. Um, yeah, I think the last thing I got was I just spent like fifty dollars on Copic markers because I'm a sucker for those things and I like to draw, so it makes my drawings pop and they're pretty. That's about it. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't get much this week. Uh, well, was it this week that you got the uh, the entire box of uh, oh the, the case or? of crayons? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The case of crayons is still lying there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I've I've given away or not not given away, but I've given sets to like two different people so far. I've got like transform six. away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there, there are a, a, uh, an entire set of six costs about nineteen. It was like nineteen seventy. 
So yeah, about as much as a regular sized transformer. Um, they are pretty cool though. They really are. I like the colors on them. You know, I said that last week. I think I still think Galvatron is the best out of the six. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> I love Galvatron. He's adorable. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of partial to Sunstorm. I'm well, yeah. It's a it's a seeker, and I'm. I'm horribly attached to the Seekers, so Sunstorm is pretty cool. Um, but you. what? What'd you say? <laughs> I have no idea what that was. But yeah, the um, I didn't really get much else other than that. Um, something. So I had something else on my mind, and then he spoke and like threw me off. <laughs> always great. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't speak while I'm talking. It throws me off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having technical malfunctions. <laughs> oh, no. it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's about it for what I spend anyway. Not anything else. What you spend? All right, uh, Michael, do you want to tell us a little bit what made your out? Um, well, say out. <laughs> what made my ouch? You made what made your ouch say <laughs> wallet? <laughs> um, well. I got, well, the first thing I did this week is I bought the DLC that came out for Fall of Cybertron on day one, which I did uh, begrudgingly, you know, wasn't very excited about paying for those, but I really wanted the Ultra Magnus for customization, so I did. Um, and then I made my trip to Walmart, uh, for completely non-Transformers reasons. Uh, I had to do some grocery shopping. But of course, any trip to Walmart means I go to the toy section. And I totally rearranged my toy section. And uh, I found the new Bot Shot launchers. Um, and so I was going to buy Bot Shot's, you know, Ironhide, the launcher. And then I went to the Creo section, and I found the blind packs. And I was like, well, I already know I love Bot Shots. Um, and I, I think... There was plenty of them on these pegs that he'll hang around. Uh, so I ended. I I bought number. The, I looked at the pack and I couldn't remember which ones were which. But I ended up coming out with a uh, waspinator and spinister, and I loved them. So I went back today and bought the rest of them. Uh, and they're amazing. Um, Can't wait for the uh, for the combiners. The combiner crayons. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's pretty much it for me. And uh, just for just for the heck of it, um, out of the out of the extra pieces, I totally made a uh, <laughs> a mobile gun turret. <laughs> that was cool. There. It's kind of, nice. kind of like uh, G1 Megatron's, uh, the pieces of the scope, you put them together and make like a little cannon for him, which I don't like ever see anybody ever using, but, but, uh, now, but it's still ask, pretty awesome. All you got, because surely you guys were digging through bags like me, did it seem like there were a lot of twos and sevens, which was Waspinator and Spinister? It's like I, f I found just one Scorponok, and then the rest seem to be those two. Well, I picked up uh, mine and Duran's this week, and I, oh. I ran into them in the store where I work, and they seem to have an even number of all of them. I didn't know who was assigned to which which number, but uh, you know, I just went through and grabbed two of each number, and they seem to be a pretty even amount. I think there was like three or four of each. You just got a bum box, Cyber. Uh, I uh, maybe people had already picked through them and they just put more out. I don't know. I actually haven't seen them at retail, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't even have them had uh, Insane Galvatron not pick, picked up a full set for me while he was uh, looking for them. But you know, I mean, I, every store that I've been into. Actually, the local Walmart here, uh, they haven't even got Creos. I mean, I found like a Creo Sideswipe on clearance on an end cap, but aside from that, I haven't. Even, I can't even find a Creo section 
there. It's like yeah, they're Legos it's, it's and actually, Mega Blocks of all. Overtaken. It's actually not for whatever reason. Um, uh, Walmart, for the majority of it, have kicked their entire Creo stock out to uh, clearance. Why I don't know, but apparently they're not selling the Creos anymore. So it's like, I mean, I had to find mine. The I had to find my Creo blind packs at Target. Um, but both of the Toys R Us's in my area are also, they also have the Creos and have a huge, they have both the, both the blind packs and a huge Creo section. So it's like, I mean, I don't know, the Walmarts might be phasing out the, the building blocks for all I know or just replacing them with other things that are coming up. I mean, because like the, I know that Hasbro doesn't have any jurisdiction over this, but the, uh, uh, I didn't even know that World of Warcraft had a building block set, but apparently now they're starting to come out with that. So I think they might be making they might be making room for it. Yeah, actually, the uh, the local Walmart here they they had the uh, I believe they actually did have a World of Warcraft set there, but they like I said there was absolutely no sign of Creos at all except for that uh, they had the side swap Creo, uh, but there they had like an entire aisle of Legos and then like a little section of like the Mega Blocks, like the... Which know, Walmart was that? Here in Georgetown. Okay, because I've been to the one in Lexington and the one in Nicholsville where I bought ours, and they had a full Creo section. It was just mostly Battleship. Yeah. I think the only actual Transformers ones they had, they had the two small sets of Prime and Bumblebee, and then they had the two-pack, the new two-pack of Prime and Megatron, and then I found that one case of the little Creons. And then, yeah, everything else was the you know first wave stuff that was in clearance section. But they had some in the little building block aisle. It was just mostly battleship. Yeah, most yeah. Of my my Creo section, most of it was empty except for the new sets, and then all the old sets had been moved over the you know clearance area. So I think they're just getting it ready. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I know the local Target. Um, they, well, the one that's closest to us, they have a Creo set, but, uh, or a Creo section, but it's not, not real, uh, huge. Um, let's see here. Uh, in St. Galvatron, you want to tell us about, uh, what you picked up this week? Well, I already just mentioned the, uh, the Creons, uh, picked up the, you know, full set of those. Um, I gotta say, I, my favorite part of the Creo, and I always liked Legos as a kid, and I enjoyed building all the sets, but I didn't really like the Creons. I don't know if it's because they were hard to get that made me like them, or maybe they like them for their simplicity because they were just Transformers based little Lego men. But I gotta say, I don't, these, I was very underwhelmed. Um, I, I think they're awesome, but I think the fact they try to make them Transformers, I'm trying to view them as like a full building block set, build two modes. And I was very underwhelmed with some of the alt modes on some of uh, Some did it good. I thought Waspinator or Swarp were not getting really good. Um, Galvatron, I felt like that was a little bit of a fail. Same way with the, the crank case or crank start, whatever he's called. Uh, Spinister, though, was the worst. He just laid down and then attached, you know, I guess really the, the running boards of the cocker to the bottom. I think he looks better, though, even though he's just, you know, Turn him sideways and attach that stuff. I think he looks better than some of the other ones. Yeah, and yeah it he looks it good, but I guess after converting some of the others, you have to have to take them apart. And then there was a lot more take apart and rebuilding than I expected into these things. The early pictures, it looked like they were all going to be that way. Just lay them down, attach parts. Um, so yeah. I was kind of surprised at how much there was taking apart, and putting together. I thought for the best one, in my opinion, though, as far as the experience of converting it from one to the other, would probably be Sunstorm. Uh, he felt like that just just the right amount of mix of you know rearranging parts, but not so much so. Um, at least that's just my opinion. So, but yeah, I got those. Um, picked up uh, Fall of Cybertron, obviously for the PS3 that that came out. So I picked that up. I've not yet played it uh, because I've been going through War for Cybertron, but I've been burning through War for Cybertron. I've made a lot of progress. I finally finished the Decepticon campaign, and I'm like halfway through the Autobot campaign. So. Hopefully soon I'll actually play Fall of Sonic Tron. You and, must. You must. Oh, I will. It, it's going to happen. I've been burning up War for Sonic I've played more than the last time I've played, you know, at least in the campaign, the whole time I've had the game. Um, 
uh, picked up earlier in the week, stopped at a local comic shop. They got in a really mint collection from somebody, a bunch of G1 toys. Um, unfortunately, most of the stuff already had in nearly as mint condition, plus they were asking eBay prices for the stuff, and really kind of hard to argue on down on price considering how mint the stuff is, I and mean, it looks like it came right out of the box. Yeah, uh, it's from the it. same collection that I got my wheel jack from last week, and mm -hmm. it's a really nice wheel jack. I mean, I can't. Yeah. So I picked up the the G1 Overdrive, the Omnibot, uh, because, again, it's the mintiest one of those I've ever seen. Um, and then even though I already had a G1 Sunstreaker, I picked up another one because, again, it was the mintiest one I've ever seen. Um, it didn't have, you know, the paint chip for the least amount I've ever seen the toy. The chrome looks near perfect. So, yeah, it's much nicer than the one I had. Um and of course, you know, that's one of the two things I got from there because that would cost me like 150 bucks for those two. Um, and then I had ordered on eBay a G1 scoop uh, complete, oh, man. and that mm. that showed up. What? Sorry. Were you reacting to me picking up scoop? No. Oh, okay. Um, I'm yeah. sorry. There's a the the there's a promo that someone had put up for the new episodes coming up, and oh, so you're freaking out. <laughs> Geeking out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this I'm sorry. The, There's like lots well, of spoilers in this thing, and I really want to see it like right now. <laughs> well, that's the problem with doing this in video. We're normally do audio. Is you just make noises in the background. I don't notice, but when it's video, I can see you freaking out. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Spazzing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So um, I got the G1 scoop. Uh, it came this week in a box, and you know, we're it's pretty much just it's G1 scoop. It's very simple G1 toy. Nothing spectacular to brag about there. It just, I, it's another G1. That must... Oh, wow. I think we Both lost him there for a second. <laughs> Three G1s and those micro changers and a game. Who, who'd you lose, me? Yeah, okay. you, you uh, went silent there for a second. For oh, okay. Uh, I was just saying that's all the uh, G1s that I got, or all the Transformers I got this week. Uh, and then I picked up the TMNT 2012 Splinter tonight at the store, actually. Uh, I already picked up a Turtle and Shredder and Crane uh, and a couple of foot soldiers, and I saw Splinter, and I'm like, 777 at Walmart. Wow. You know, I almost bought uh, Donatello That's it. the other day because simply for the reason Donatello was my favorite turtle. Yeah, I don't know if you guys should hear Yeah, I can, I can still hear you. But um, the only reason I didn't is because... I, if I bought one turtle, I'd, I would have to buy them all, and I didn't want to have to com commit myself to that, so um, I, I didn't. But uh, my Ouch My Wallet this week actually is quite awesome, uh, in my opinion, um, and I really didn't spend that much to do it because, well, at least not this week, because I traded a whole lot of uh, stuff with uh, with their sponsor, Captured Prey. Um, uh, I was... As much as I love the Prime show and, and everything, and I, I love the designs of the Prime figures, um, just I, I feel like I'm spreading out too much. If I feel like I'm picking up everything that says Transformers on it again, and I don't want to get into that. I want to collect specifically certain lines and certain things that I like. Uh, so I traded all of my Prime stuff, uh, with the exception of a few select figures that I really like. Uh, all of my Dark of the Moon stuff, all of my well, all my movie verse stuff, and uh, got store credit. And uh, well, with my store credit, I picked up uh, uh, Warbot Defender, uh, <laughs> loving so much. And <laughs> Amber's freaking out here. The only thing <laughs> is, <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, the the only thing is that the the little black clip that goes on. The, the gray peg uh, was broken out of the package. Well, it had a crack in it. Uh, it's not completely broken, but it will not allow the, the blade to stay all the way up in helicopter mode. So uh, I've, I've emailed Fans Project, and hopefully they can send me a replacement on that. Otherwise, I think I can fix it rather easily with, uh, with other means. But... Uh, uh, <laughs> what is so freaking funny? <laughs> Do share. You don't want to know. <laughs> Sorry. 
somebody showing her dirty pictures or something. Or something no. sure. <laughs> Twitter. <What? laughs> Twitter. I'm looking at Twitter. <laughs> fail but I'm, uh, I'm being dirty actually no my friends are being dirty i just said something they just ran with it <laughs> no you could <can't> possibly <laughs> have. is it is it more uh more uh star uh, star screen penises or something that you're <laughs> no actually i i wrote i wrote guys silas fuck and one of my friends is like where's the shot i suppose i mean he is clancy brown nemesis prime probably gave him the weirdest boner though uh, <laughs> i see that yeah, Brantosaur, I guess, last week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another more weird boners. Mm, look at me. I didn't say it this time. <laughs> mm. This time it's not my fault. I'm so, the, the promos got me all fuzzy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Oh, well, crap. Oh, I'm we... Used... We lost Greg, Greg. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did lose Greg. Yeah. But uh, hopefully he can join back in here. Let me shoot him an invite. Uh, let's see. Some, some technical issues. Yeah. 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 But uh, I'll continue on with my Ouch My Wallet. Um, also in, in trade, um, I, I already had a Power Core Combiner uh, heavy tread. Well, I picked up both sets of the of the uh, Iron Armies um, from uh, I think Fans Project is uh, what did these, and they're pretty freaking awesome. Uh, they have their individual robot modes. Uh, the detail on them is fantastic. Um, I guess they kind of have historical um, significance. You got the P thirty one or P fifty one Mustang. Uh, the Shenzhen from Japan, the Mustangs from the U.S., uh, the Tiger Tank, I believe, from the uh, German Army, and the I forget what the uh, what the uh, designation is from the Russian Army uh, for the for the tank. But as you can see, it makes a pretty nice looking uh, combiner, and uh, I really like him. Uh, he's pretty awesome, and I'm actually thinking of picking up a second. Uh, set of both um, and kind of mix max, uh, mixing and matching with it and making like an all tank combiner and an all plane combiner so uh, it would be really really awesome um, to uh, uh, looks like Greg has joined us again uh, to, to get that uh, I did pick up uh, as, as we mentioned a while ago um, it seems like we've all picked up the the changing creos uh, the creons uh, my favorite so far is both uh, scorponok and sunstorm my thoughts on them I, I like them but I'm not a huge creo fan but I, I got them just to say I got them and uh, and and everything these will probably be the only sets I'll actually pick up with the exception, if they if they by chance do a weird wolf or a character that I really really love, and then I did pick up. Uh, I know I mentioned last week on the podcast, and uh, <laughs> yes, Brent a story. You did start a tradition, <laughs> um, but uh, I did mention that I picked up my first Brave figure, and uh, here he is, uh, Brave DX Express Might Gain. He is pretty cool, love him, and he is electronic. Uh, I know he's pretty loud, but uh, a lot of gold chrome on him turns into a train, and of course the arms come off, and uh, they're both end of well, uh, the white one turns into a robot, but this one here turns into kind of like a space shuttle uh, looking plane. Um, he's uh, kind of powered. Um, Goodness, all kinds of noise, yeah. <laughs> Uh, makes all kinds of noise. Uh, so you parents out there, you don't want to get your children this because it's a noisemaker. Uh, but uh, what's really cool with him is that you can combine him, with, uh, as big as he is, you can combine him with uh, Mike Kaiser and Mike Gunner to form great Mike Gain. And uh, um, I'm going to pick those up 
uh, as soon as I can because I absolutely love this figure. If you're a G1 fan, uh, it's it's right down your alley. Uh, it comes. Uh, they came out. They were made by Takara and uh, uh, later reissued by Sonokong or Sonokong or whatever how you pronounce it in, in Korea, uh, like the Beast Wars Neo stuff. And uh, um, they're 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 really nice. Uh, uh, if you, if you're totally into the blocky G1 aesthetic, um, I believe that's all I picked up this week. Um, like I said, most of it was in trade. Uh, my collection got a little bit smaller, but uh, like I said, I, I really like the fact that uh, it was uh, uh, also for uh, for figure. I, I picked up figures that I really really wanted in that. So. Uh, um, I don't know, and Saint Galvatron seems to have dropped out completely, <laughs> and I don't know why. I shall invite him once again. He's tired of us. He just doesn't want to say it to our faces. Yeah. Hmm. You I know, since he can actually see us now. Well, see, the thing is, I told him he's on uh, because he's on Wi-Fi. Uh, he would uh, have problems, but. I'm on then Wi-Fi. Again, I'm on Wi-Fi too. But uh, and the thing is, he's actually closer to the uh, to the. Uh, you probably heard my dogs though. Yes, go kill them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I believe that'll do it for our Ouch My Wallet segment this week. We'll move on to our news segment, which uh, there we seem to have quite a bit of new stuff. Uh, later on in this episode, we'll discuss the newest episode of. Transformers Prime, uh, the episode called Hurt. Yay! Uh, uh, and it would be uh, fun to talk about here. I'm trying to read some of the... Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, Shadowbreaker X, uh, he corrected me. Uh, yes, TF Club did do the... Or TFC did do the uh, Iron Army. I, I misspoke a while ago. Um, you are correct on that one. Uh... Our news segment this week, I guess we'll kick it off um, uh, with more Sunstorm news. Uh, Masterpiece MP11S Sunstorm. Uh, the first in-hand picks have showed up in, I believe, Singapore and uh, in the Asian markets. And it looks like it's going to be really, uh, really cool. I had one on pre-order, but um, financially right now I uh, I canceled it because I just, I just couldn't... Uh, I couldn't swing it right now, but I really, really want this figure. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts on uh, MP11S sideburn? Um, yeah. To be perfectly honest with you, I've never been a fan of the Sunstorm uh, color scheme. Uh, I don't know. It's just too bright for me. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I really don't. I really don't care for it. Uh, yeah, it's and the two tones. But he's is orange. <laughs> well, he's orange. Except for at the back, which he looks extremely neon yellow. Well, um, uh, I believe he's got some like neon yellow, like flames on him and everything. He's supposed so. to look like I think he's supposed to look like he's like entering the atmosphere or something. But I don't know. Figure just doesn't do it for me. If it, if it was all the dark orange, he might look a little better in jet yeah. mode. I, I wish they did a more close homage to the uh, the first Sunstorm that we had. The uh, I believe it was an e-hobby. Maybe it wasn't an e-hobby. But yeah, it was, uh, the re was yeah, the reissue uh, Starscream in, uh, in orange and white colors. Everyone was wondering where this came from, and then uh, uh, a lot of people pointed out that there was a, a seeker in More Than Meets the Eye that was... Uh, colored much or very similarly to Sunstorm and that's I guess where they got the idea from but you kind of wonder why they haven't done like the 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 purple one and the green one and stuff like that uh, aside from like Acid Storm and uh, yeah. classics stuff but I know that we do have another Seeker fan here uh, Mirai Baby your he... thoughts on uh, Sunstorm? Um, I think he's cool um, I will likely not be picking him up though uh, judging from the American release masterpiece uh, Skywarp I have, 
uh, it's pretty big. <laughs> I just have no room for it. I'd love to have it, but I just and the, I mean, his, Sunstorm is cool. He's an awesome character, but the his color scheme isn't isn't my favorite. So uh, the color scheme is is right down my alley, but uh, right now the price is not because he yeah. runs around a hundred and eighty bucks. Uh, that's before shipping, so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's a little bit more than I want to pay for a masterpiece right now. Uh, I know Soundwave is going to be up there too, but uh, I think you get a little bit more with him. Plus, he's not a simple recolor. Um, the The interesting thing is, is that the Sunstorm will come with a Coronation crown, like <laughs> the Coronation Star Scream and Cape, um, which I think is a little bit odd. That's but, uh, it's actually what I understand. I mean. I guess I don't know. It's actually kind of common with the uh, masterpiece figures, at least the the Takara ones. Um, Skywarp has it too. You can occasionally find a Skywarp that actually has a coronation set. That's it's Skywarp's coronation set instead of like Star Screams. It's like in mm -hmm. Skywarp colors. So I think that's kind of common for Takara to do with the Seekers is to give them all coronation sets. It's, well, it's, they should it's, all be kings. It's just another way for them to suck money out of us. Oh, yes. And they're, and they're working on doing it, because I want myself a coronation set for my Starscream, or for my Skywarp, even though he doesn't actually ever become a prince. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Starscream I would totally want one for, but um, Sunstorm, Skywarp, uh, I really could care less if I had a coronation set for them, because it just doesn't have a, a fit for me. But uh, I mean, in mine, I just don't have a big. I, I love Starscream, but I just don't have that big of a a need to have those toys. So yeah. it's like I won't get the Starscream set. I will get the Skywarp set because that goes along with my collection of. Oh my God! I don't have enough black and purple. <laughs> um, first hand images or final images rather of. Uh, Masterpiece Soundwave and Red Alert have been spotted. Uh, your guys' thoughts on that? Sideburn? Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I think I prefer Red Alert over Sideswipe. Uh, and it's the, I think the, uh, having two different colors, like on the hood, um, which I know, of course, Sideswipe didn't in G1, but I don't know. I just think it makes it the figure pop more. Um, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't just say you like Red Alert <laughs> better than Sideswipe. Hi. Oh, okay. no, you didn't. In this I case, do. In this case, I think I, think I do. <laughs> um, I mean, Sideswipe... Uh, and I'm not. I'm not saying that as you know, as I like Red Alert overall better than Sideswipe, but I think the figure looks better as Red Alert than it does Sideswipe. Um, he also has a lot of you know remolding, which I was surprised to see. Look, that's Greg. Yes, I, my computer decided to self-destruct. Everything was working perfectly fine during the before broadcast. As soon as we went on air, I started having technical glitches, and I thought it straightened up when I closed a few programs that's running on the taskbar, and then I started doing my house my wallet. It started kind of geeking out again on me, and then finally it just, everything froze up and was done. Mm -hmm. Now I'm finally back. <laughs> What the fudge? We are just yeah. having technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... I'm going to show up to you twice now. Hi. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know that the drone dropped out, too. Yeah. I'm back now. As for Soundwave, um, he's just freaking awesome. There's, you know, what did you expect? <laughs> I love Laserbeak. I mean, it's just... So that it's trans that it all transforms into the tape without having to remove any, remove any parts. It's you know it's definitely masterpiece sound wave. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Um let's see here, I've got to copy and repaste the uh 
the notes for me here because they're gone. Um, Masterpiece Soundwave looks absolutely flipping amazing to me. Uh, I cannot wait for this figure. It is way, way overdue. They should have done a Soundwave a long time ago. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad they waited because uh, now they've got a little bit better technology uh, in the Masterpiece series uh, than they would have, say, back whenever they released uh, MP01 uh, Prime. Uh, these new masterpieces, even though they're smaller, they they look a lot better, I think, um, to their to their cartoon counterparts. Uh, and and this sound wave, better. yeah, bigger's not always better. Because he'll uh, fit better on my shelf. But uh, I think he's 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 amazing, um, and the fact that you'd be able to get uh, more cassettes for him um, is just a plus. Um. Let's see here. Oh no! Well, uh, Shadow uh, Shadowbreaker X uh, also uh, commented that uh, Red Alert wins because the head uh, head sparks and uh, more toy accuracy. <laughs> the head sparks? Is that new? I did not know that. I know the uh, in the cartoon it uh, it sparked, but uh, it'd be cool if the toy did too. Anybody know? I have no idea. I have no idea. It might it might for like light piping or whatever. But other nice. than actual like like oh my god there are electric electronic components in there push a button on his back and he lights up like nah, I don't know. That would be cool. <laughs> but it would also be inhibited too, but well, I guess if if there's some kind of light piping, you could probably get like one of those little LED lights like is available for the uh the Hercules set. Um, mm -hmm. that plugs into the like a little hole on the back of the head or something, and, and you can light them up. That mm -hmm. would be cool. Um, thoughts on Masterpiece Soundwave uh, uh, and St. Galvatron? Uh, I pretty much shadow what everybody else has already said. It, uh, it looks fantastic. Um, you know, I'm like you. I'm glad they waited until they had these, uh, the newer, smaller scales to give us this toy. Um it takes up less space, but as I look at the new Prime, I have you know, MPL one as well as you know MP ten, or and it's it's a vast improvement. Uh, the toy just it looks better, the engineering's better. I like the smaller size; they're still big enough to get all the detail and complexity in there, but yet again, they don't take up as much shelf space. And for me, you know, you see in the background, I got you know I got so much shelf space behind me with these curio cabinets, so you know, smaller figures work better as long as they're nice. And Soundwave, he looks awesome. He's going to fit right in there with, uh, you know, with, with the Prime and the Rodimus that I have that has not self-constructed yet. And uh, I still need to pick up a Star Screen, though. I can't believe he sold out everywhere the price he was. Um, Mariah, baby, your thoughts on Masterpiece Soundwave? First um, pick. <laughs> Final pick, rather. <laughs> oh, my God. I think he's cool. Um, I will, again, probably end up not getting it because I don't have the space. Um, but I've, I have been, like, dying to get my hands on a, a G1-ish or otherwise figure. This one's fantastic. I, I'm still kind of hovering on kind of getting this one or waiting and springing for that fantastically gold Linkin Park one Ooh. simply because it's gold and it's pretty and I think I'm just going to hang it on a chain and wear it around my neck. That thing is <laughs> super expensive because it's going to sell out quick. I yeah. know. I mean, part of my thing is it's just like I I think it would be cool to have like I think I might actually spring for the Linkin Park Soundwave and sell Soundwave and keep the cassettes. And put the cassettes on chains around my neck because then I can actually wear it as a necklace and it not be like some big gaudy thing hanging off my body. It, you need, you need to have some bling, though. <laughs> I don't think I need that much bling. I'll tell you what, if I have trouble getting a hold of that release and you manage to get it, I'll take you up on that offer. I, if I, I have gold sound wave with no tapes, then no gold sound wave at all. That's That would work. I'm just, I just don't want that. I just, the sound wave's, like, huge. But, yeah, the the toy is awesome. Um, I'm really kind of cool. I'm really kind of, uh, I don't know, giddy, pleased that he comes with uh, Megatron's alt mode. I think that's that's kind of a cool touch that they really didn't need to put in. And um, I mean, I know that other people have been thinking about it, or other people have been knowing about it. But you know, this is like only like the second time I've ever seen this uh, this character, or this mold rather. 
I don't know. I think he's cool. Most definitely. And congrats to everybody who gets it, because it won't be me. <laughs> I'm, uh, believe it or not, Masterpiece Soundwave is one of the few that I do not have pre-ordered. Um, I've got uh, Sideswipe and Red Alert pre-ordered, but I do not have so uh, Soundwave at the moment. Although I do plan on doing it. Um, it's just <clears throat> because of his higher price point, um, I, you know, I want to be a little bit more careful on what I uh, what I pre-order. I'm 100 percent sure that. Well, I would say I'm 99.9 .9 sure that Hasbro will release him here. Uh, <coughs> well, they have to because he's he's just he's one of those iconic characters that everybody rem remembers, even if they're not a huge Transformer fan. I mean, everybody remembers the Take Deck dude, and they could release him at Walmart, and he would sell. I, I'm I'm a hundred percent sure of that. Um, Prime, if Prime sells, and Soundwave would sell. Well, uh, but it's, and it's, it's common it's sense. Kind of like the rules of Transformers, though. What I figured out is it's just like the three the three most iconic characters in Transformers is Optimus, Megatron, and Soundwave. Yeah. I mean, when uh, back in 2008, when uh, one of my friends built a blaster costume for uh, San Diego Comic Con, she had at least half of the people that came up to her tried to call her Soundwave or Sound Blaster. So. This Blaster himself is just not all that well known, but however, Soundwave is like one of those iconic faces that like everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. and he's uh, also if uh, if they're able to uh, include the voice, you know, which I know the toy probably won't have a voice box or anything, but I mean, if you hear Soundwave's voice, you know it's Soundwave because he was also one of those voices that always stuck with you. I mean, I know whenever I got back into collecting in the early two thousands. Um, and I'd actually forgotten a lot of Transformers stuff, you know, and uh, getting back into it, and I heard Soundwave's voice, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that so much, you know. I just I just loved it. Uh, and it wasn't until later that I actually found out that uh, Frank Welker also did his voice as well as Megatron's and Rumble's and a couple others. But... Um, also, more Masterpiece news. Masterpiece Thunder, uh, Thundercracker has been spotted at retail. Um, who wants to take this one? Gimme, 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 gimme. I don't mean the story. I mean the Thundercracker. Uh, <laughs> I still got to try to get a hold of a star screen, but I'll, I'll take Thundercracker for now. Yeah. I've got my long. sky warp. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I, uh, I would love to get get a Thundercracker, you know, um, I don't have a Toys R Us, so I'm kind of screwed. I, I, I really, you know, I know they already released a, a, a Skywarp here once, but I would love to get that mold as Skywarp again. Um, because well, this, is the, this is the retool, so that's what makes me want it. Yeah. I despise well, the what, cable on the first release. That's what I'm saying is I, I would like the retool as Skywarp, you know. The, uh, all three, so... He's always been my favorite seeker. What, Thundercracker or Skywarp? Uh, Skywarp. Uh, yeah, the black and the purples and the silvers. It's, oh, yeah. it's the best. It beats the rest. Now, um, where was it the uh, the Thundercracker was spotted at retail? The trip story. That I'm not sure. I don't know if I the new story. Kansas. Kansas Toys R Us. I posted okay. the news story. I noticed that there was a uh, there was a news story on TFW that somebody had actually uh, went to a Toys R Us in Kansas and saw a um, shelf tag of sixty nine ninety nine for uh, Masterpiece Thundercracker, but I was unaware that they had actually found one sitting on the shelf. Yeah, and the link I posted, you can see, you know, there's the shelf tag, and then one. Lonely, I, th I think it's just one lonely Thundercracker sitting where all the Thundercrackers used to be. Ah, uh, oh, yes, it is so pretty too. It, it looks like a very similar box to the Masterpiece Rodimus too. It's the same box that uh, the uh, Masterpiece Skywarp came in, and 
That is... I mean, he's... Hang on. Now I have to get up to get it. <sighs> Luckily, he's not that far away, but he is one hell of a toy. He's he's huge. He's he's just about as big as the uh, as the, the Japanese one, and it's just like. I mean, I love this thing. Unfortunately, I can't really store it in uh, in robot mode because he's huge. Uh, That's what but, she said. Yes. <laughs> I can't. I can't store him in robot mode. Yeah, it is what well, she said. <laughs> it is what I said. Yes, fancy that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he, he's cool. And if I'm sure that this is just that that Sky or yeah names uh, that Thundercracker is just a repaint of Skywarp. Um, quite fascinated to. There he is. Big as my head. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, mine's yeah. way over here. <laughs> Yeah. He's pretty big. <laughs> I'm the only one that no longer has that Skywarp. I sold them out off because I hated that hip kibble. I really want another release of Skywarp as well. Yeah, I, that would be cool to get a re-release of that because the hip kibble on him is just kind of suckish. But, you know, it's a Skywarp toy and it was black and purple, so it had to be in my collection. But, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it in my targets. I just haven't done so yet. Um, another one of our uh, podcast members, he's not on tonight, but uh, Guard Convoy uh, noticed that the uh, Dollar General Legends, Optimus Prime and Starscream, uh, had the remolded, um, mo- uh, the, the remolds of the, uh, the same as the Asian exclusives. Um, they uh, the Asian exclusives had uh, what what was he remolded for? I know the lasers on Thundercracker was re, uh, remolded. What uh, what else? Well, was then, they, they, besides, um, let's see. I think the back of Optimus's head was remolded to plug the uh, this gun or whatever up into there. Um, and he comes with the came with a new gun too. The first yeah. release of toy for S Prime didn't have it. Yeah, these come with the uh, the extra weapons that. These legends didn't originally come from. I also think they remolded the hands. I don't remember. I don't think back in. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they did have the hands when these came out. I can't remember. Um, you know, at one point, legends couldn't hold anything. I can't remember if these came out before or after the fact. Now, yeah, the, I've got. Uh... Well, it's I've actually moved it over on the on the shelf, but uh, Legends uh, Prime, his his hands kind of formed like a C, so okay. yeah, he could so he could actually hold something. That, that was back before. That's back when they had the ability to hold weapons, but they didn't actually come with weapons. So, mm. so yeah, these come with the extra like these come with the more accurate looking null rays for Starscream, except for he can't put them on his you know shoulders; he has to hold them in his hands. Oh, fail. Well, uh, by by default, the uh, the mold already has the ability to have arm lasers. So, unless they changed, yeah, but they're the hinged on there. Yeah. yeah. How's that going to work? Because those form part of the jet. Yeah. How's that going to work on the remold? They're still there. Um, the new null rays are handheld guns. They don't actually connect to his arms. So he'll have four guns instead of two now. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, before we move on in this uh, podcast, uh, I just want to uh, restate that we are broadcasting live uh, this recording of uh, TFYLP. We hope you're enjoying it. Um, we uh, encourage any comments or questions um, that you may have on to the uh uh, YouTube channel that we're broadcasting live to. Uh, if uh, if you have the ability, uh, please retweet it, um, tell your friends about it, and spread the word. Uh, get the word out there and 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 get us more listeners. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, also uh, want to remind you that if you do download it, uh, if you're one of the downloading listeners or listening to it live on uh, on the website. Uh, we have a website at uh, geekexistence.com, and we also have forums there where, in which you can post. Uh, feel free to go on over there and sign up. 
and uh, also rate us on iTunes. Uh, that's the only way we can get noticed is people uh, rating us and giving us good reviews. So if you like us, please do so. Um, we'll move on with our news. Our next uh, subject is uh, the TFCC subscription service jackpot is indeed getting a remolded head. Now I know Sideburn too. You probably want to take this one because you was uh, you was really interested in that figure. Yeah. So last week we talked about you know these when the subscription service came out, and I kind of said, "Is that a new head?" Um, and we all decided, "No, nah, that's just Jazzy's head." Well, it turns out he actually is getting a new head. And I, that makes me even more excited about it because this is, beforehand we only thought, you know, Breakdown was getting a new head in Slipstream. So this means at least three figures are actually getting new heads in the subscription service. Uh, what, uh, can you kind of describe to us what, uh, what the new head looks like? Uh, I know it's a little hard, but. Um, well, okay. Yeah, haha. <laughs> Second. You gotta pull it up. Ah, oh, live recording. Don't you just love this? <laughs> no, <laughs> see, it's, it's it's moments like this that we edit out, where I edit out of the uh, of the recorded podcast. But um. yes, don't wish to be lose me again because I think my computer, the process you should be able to see it. Can handle so oh, much yes. live streaming. I'm already sure to have technical glitches. Yeah, he can uh, he can share the screen now. So, uh, but it's only uh, up yeah, there if, if he talks. Yeah. Now, if you um, talk, you, it'll be up there on the. Well, screen. you can actually click on it if you click on the screen. Click on the image itself. Click on his screen, and it'll pop up and stay there. And mm, it does have. Not, it is a it's different. Not for me. There it goes. Yeah. So yeah. it was. Uh, it was tweeted by. I think it was first tweeted by you know, Derek J. Wyatt, and that's where I first saw it, and then I, it went up on other sites pretty fast. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, basically, I mean, I don't know, who's Jackpot supposed to be based off of? He's based off somebody, right? Uh, Action Master Jackpot, isn't it? Is it Action Master Jackpot? I'm pretty sure there is an Action Master jackpot, um, but that's it yes, it is an a Action Master. Uh, looking at the Transformers wiki right now, uh, yeah, it's Action Master that was released um, 1990. Uh, comes came with uh, sites, I guess as a target master partner or something, and looks like he turned turned into some kind of well sites uh, turned from a gun into a bird, but yeah, it looks like the the head. I'll uh, I'll see if I can share my screen here. So yeah, I think you know they usually did a pretty good job basing it mostly off what they're uh, yeah. So it. It looks like Jackpot's head. <laughs> yeah, uh, if if you're viewing my uh, my screen right now, the uh, the head looks a lot like this, uh, and as Cyburn showed, and then, but this is the Action Master Jackpot uh, that it was that it was uh, molded after. Now the um, the Botcon toy kickover. Uh, is this exact same color scheme? So I'm assuming that he was uh, um, modeled after j uh, Jackpot. And he, uh, I don't know if anybody else is. Uh... What's that? Sorry, I got distracted uh, by. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, looks like Insane Galvatron uh, dropped out again. He's having all kinds of issues. <laughs> Not only mentally, but he's also having. But yeah, so, so definitely, uh, 
I don't know why Jackpot doesn't get. Uh, I know there was a lot of animated fans out there. I can't be the only animated fan that is excited about more animated figures, even if it's <laughs> if it's someone who was never even in the show. Um, no, so I don't actually, know why it's getting so much hate. The one. I, I, I'm actually looking forward to. I mean, if they do any of the uh, any new uh, animated figures, I'm all the hell over it. I mean, like the um, there's one that I discovered recently. His name is Stretch, and he oh, is. Oh, I saw your tweet the a while ago. I love <laughs> he it. He is uh, Powell's Stretch limo, like oh, yeah. I old, have like old style, like. Like what is it? Like not even fifties, but like old style limo. And apparently, when he transforms, he has a monocle and a top hat and a cane. And I'm like, I need this toy. <laughs> if they ever come out with that toy, I will throw money at it. I don't care how much it is. Yeah, uh, I don't know if Jer uh, Derek J. Wyatt actually saw that picture, but uh, <laughs> it looks like one that he would have done. I mean, well, it, it actually is. Um, it oh. is in. It's in the All Spark addendum. Oh, okay. Now I noticed there the the same artist that did that one also did, I believe, a turbo and uh, yeah. um, there was another one too. Yeah. I, I favorited them on the on Deviant Art, and I thought they were really nice. Yeah, he's uh, he's actually in the All Spark Addendum too. Um, and I just if he ever becomes a toy, I'll throw money at it because that's another one of those. Hey, it's kind of steampunky. I kind of need it. <laughs> well, a, a robot wearing a Tuxedos. The just... <laughs> top hat and a cane and a yeah. monocle. I well, need this toy. And he also has a, a bow tie. Oh, too, oh and a mustache. He has a mustache too. Yeah. Do not pass go. <laughs> Do not collect $200. He's perfectly animated. He is. <laughs> um, yeah, t uh, the turbo was pretty nice too, but uh, uh, but I have to admit the tux was, was way over the top. Uh, that was really awesome. Um Let's move on here. What's our next topic? Oh, uh, Transformers Prime Season 2 release on DVD and Blu-ray, November 20th. Uh, not that far off, so I guess uh, that just shows how close we are to the end of Season 2, uh, even though we just came back from hiatus uh, this past week. Um, now... Uh, I have the first season on Blu-ray, and I will definitely be picking up the second season. Uh, this show just keeps getting better and better and better. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, with the exception of the death of uh, uh, Breakdown, but, you know, hey. <laughs> well, death of Breakdown aside, the, the promo that was released apparently this morning um, has a bunch of, like, jam-packed stuff, so... As long as well, the storyline uh, keeps up, I think we're okay. We'll, we'll mention that in the uh, spoilerific uh, uh, conclusion at the end of this episode where we talk mm -hmm. about the episode Hurt. Uh, so if you're interested in Transformers Prime and uh, want to hear our thoughts on that, uh, stay tuned for later in this episode, uh, Transformers uh, Hurt. <laughs> um, and looks like in St. Galvatron, finally... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I think that what? one was Duran. You you just went totally. Uh, oh, did we? I totally I still see you guys. Metallic. I think it probably has something to do with where we're where we're in the same house and sharing the same internet. It probably has something to do with me, you know, joining back in. Oh, well, I, so I far to my other computer because my laptop apparently cannot handle, uh, you know, the Google Plus Hangout. So. I had switched to my desktop, which means I don't have video, but at least I've got a good connection in this well, that's fine. Hamlet. That's fine. We don't want to look at you anyway. <laughs> but is <laughs> currently stuck staring at me. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm seeing the uh, the live stream over on, on YouTube, So, uh, and we're still moving on there, and it's all good. Um. Let's see here. Uh, we talked about the DVD release and Blu-ray of Season 2 of Prime. Um, your guys' thoughts on that? I know we all think it's awesome, but uh, just want to kind of go around the table and hear thoughts on that. Uh, did any of you all pick up the uh, the first season on Blu-ray or DVD? Yes. yes. Yeah, I picked it up on DVD. <laughs> Duh, I got it, yes. 
what's funny is that they're already showing the art and everything for the season two uh, set, and season two hasn't even finished airing yet. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one thing we was talking about while you were gone. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but no, you, it's we're still on the topic, so yeah. Yeah, he's still on the topic. Yeah, but, I mean, when you when you have it, I mean, three the three D. Wow, brain fart. Uh, imagery, the three D imagery from the movie or from the show. Um, as far as I know, unless I've been. Unless I've been told wrong, uh, unless I don't know how this works, is like each episode takes like what a couple of months to produce, several months. I don't know how many episodes they have finished, but by now with the hiatus, I'm sure they have. I'm sure they're probably at, at least halfway into season three by now. I would say so, so too. I don't know. I seem to hear they were running on a tight schedule with season one. I mean, that they were some of those episodes they were just wrapping them up before they were supposed to air. So a couple, you know, they were in a couple of weeks that we had some reruns where it was supposed to originally have been a new episode, but they weren't ready in time. So. That's true, but that, but then I mean, hearkening back to we had this huge hiatus, so I'm yeah. thinking that they might be finished with that. That might have been their time to catch up, so they might be finished with season two and already into season three. So they're already working on producing the DVD, and that's why they can do the release that's date. That's possible. They could have been working on season two, you know, during the break between seasons one and two, mm -hmm. as well as more during the hiatus. Yeah. Hmm. Now, uh, Transformers Prime uh, Cup and Rumble toy images have popped up. Uh, now, Cup is a recolor of the Ironhide uh, design that was used in the Le uh, Cyberverse Commander. Um However, uh, it's this is actually the deluxe size version of it. Um, any thoughts on that? I want my iron hide. I don't want cup first. I want iron hide first. Give me iron hide of that mold. I want the. I love the 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 commander. It's just it's small. I mean, since the day I got it, I'm like this will be awesome as a deluxe. And I just I'd rather have it as iron hide. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, uh, his his head doesn't look like Cup. Um, you know, just to kick things off of why I don't really care for him is he, he looks like Green Ironhide. Um, and if he looks like Green Ironhide, he is Ironhide. And uh, so I don't know why they didn't start with Ironhide first. I think Ironhide is a more popular character. Um, I mean, if if kids saw Ironhide on the shelves, they're going to think movie Ironhide. And movie Ironhide has been around for a long time. They're not going to see Cup and think anything of them. Um, so I don't know why they started with Cup first. Maybe it's to get the, the, the buy to. Maybe they'll see Cup and think, oh, it's a green Ironhide, and buy it, wishing it were the right colors. And then they release Ironhide later, and then they double dip. Yeah. Uh, I don't think kids pay attention too much to the toy as much as they do the the character that it is and the name that's on the package. You know. Yeah, I I want this mold uh, because I, I love the Cyberverse Commander version of it, but um, as Cup, I'm not so sure I want it. You know, because to me, it doesn't look. I, I'm I'm with uh, Sideburn. It doesn't look like Cup to me, but. It's uh, it's still a it's still a really nice mold, but I don't know if I would actually uh, jump on the cup version of it. Um, Mariah, baby, you have uh, thoughts on it? Um, yeah, I'm probably with the rest of you. Uh, I will actually probably end up getting it simply because I like cup. Um, it doesn't really look a lot like cup, which is kind of a bummer. But you know, in the end, I will probably end up going, I haven't gotten anything this week, so I'll pick up Cup just because I can. Because that was almost... Uh-oh. I think we lost her. Yeah, she's the one having technical glitches now. Uh, gotta love it. Live. Um... Well, we'll uh, wait a second to see if she oh, comes back. The reason there she goes. 
She's back now. <laughs> Hi. It was your turn to drop out. Yeah, apparently. My computer was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. So, yeah, I will probably end up but, getting uh, in. I will probably end up getting, probably won't won't be getting Rumble, that's for sure, because he looks weird. But uh, the cup I will probably end up getting uh, simply because it's cup, and that was part of the reason why I almost bought Arachnid and then thought better of it and put her back. So I was just like, I don't have anything better to buy this week. So I'll buy an Arachnid toy. Then I looked at it and I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm you know, that, that, that was one of the toys that whenever I first got it, uh, I liked it. But the more I fiddled with it, the more crappy I thought it was. I, I was going to be... Was, yeah, the, well, she was. she's really, really flimsy. And I, I find that a lot with uh, some of the newer stuff, um, but more so with her. I mean, she was just way too spindly for my uh, for my tastes. And was, she didn't have her third mode. That yeah. was a big part of what made her arachnid. Uh, she didn't even have a spider mode. So, spider. yeah, she, she was ultimate fail, the toy. Yeah, it, I, the only reason I even remotely wanted her was so that I could put her under Breakdown's boot. But... Yeah. Then I just looked. At, I I got to looking at so many pictures, and everybody was just like, "Oh, this is a terrible toy. Don't buy it." I'm like, "Yeah, it's okay. It can stay on the shelf." <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not buying it for fifteen dollars and forty seven cents. Well, I, I bought her back before they they really jumped up to that price. But um, I took some uh, a couple good high res photos of her. But uh, for the most part. Uh, it, well, it, it really took it took me a while just to find a pose to where she would actually look appealing. Um, but uh, yeah, that is a good question. Uh, Shadowbreaker X, uh, going back to the topic of cup, I want he's wondering if uh, the eye gear cup head would fit on Prime Cup. Uh, thoughts? I would say I'd test it out. Well, I don't I know. I eye gear head, but I'm not going to buy that toy, so. I'm going to venture a guess and say no, simply because uh, the Generations Cup had the socket in the head with the ball on the body. And I noticed yeah. all the Prime Toys have it inverted where the socket is in the body and the ball is on the head. So if they follow that pattern, Cup's going to have the ball on the head instead of the socket, so it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, looking... Let me see. Just having a gander at... The Prime Toys on my shelf next to the Generations, their helms are about the same size, but uh, I'd kind of be worried about the, the spacing in Cup's shoulder armor there. His, his shoulder pauldrons are pretty pretty large, and I know th what I'm seeing is there's a lot of space there, um, at least between the two shoulder pauldrons for his helmet. But still, uh, the... I mean, on, on Breakdown, and granted, he's a Takara toy, not a American release, but uh, his helmet is incredibly tiny. Um, much smaller than the other generation's toys. So I don't think, unfortunately, the spacing might be off. I mean, if you tried to put an eye gear cup on there, I'm pretty sure it would be kind of funny because I think his head would be just a too big, just a bit too big. <laughs> and, not like, to mention the wrong color. Not to mention wrong color. <laughs> And it would probably, it might work. I mean, if it works out in that general sense. I mean, Breakdown here has the, yeah, no, the ball joint is on is on his helmet, actually. The ball joint is part of his head. Um, well, you, you could use the uh, the old Generation. cup head that came on Generations Cup that, that you took off to put the eye gear head on and put it on. <laughs> could. Since, Could. since it's just probably laying around somewhere. <laughs> Could. I yeah, never managed to get my hands on the, the cup head. Early yeah, but that, that's a really ugly head that came on that toy. And if you buy the cup head, you had two heads anyway, so if you use one on Generations Cup, you got a spare. Yeah. Just with the Saigar. Well, the Saigar one is on Generations Cup. Hmm. Uh, Rumble. Any thoughts on uh, on Rumble? He's the wrong color. <laughs> no, he's the right yeah. color. He's blue. Rip. 
Rip you need, he's you need to, totally the right color. You need to adjust your monitor, man. That's that's blue if I ever saw it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Rumble is blue. Frenzy is red. Rib for her pleasure. I am Rurfib. See, you can't make anything clever out of that. That's why it sucks. <laughs> Um, Robin, your, th your thoughts fear, on, uh, on the you. Rumble figure? Um, I don't know. He's the right color. That's <laughs> about the only thing I could say. He's the right color. Um, That's I'm, the only good thing to say, yeah. Well, he's got the pile drivers. He comes with pile he drivers. He does, which is cool. So it does harken back to G1, which which is a plus. Don't get me wrong. Um, really not a fan of the... I've never been a fan of the the... Oh my God! Look, I have a face on my body. That's weird. Yeah. That so is kind of I mean, the, the like with uh, with Prime Starscream, it doesn't pop out as much. But with Rumble, considering how small his how stocky his uh, torso is, it just it makes it pop so much more. And all it does is remind me of um, movie Starscream. That's all it does. And I'm just like, that looks terrible. <laughs> Can we please? Yeah. Do something else with the body for once. That would be great. He's a his his helmet's kind of strange too. I'll give it that. Yeah, his head sculpt is weird. I don't, yeah. I, I like the I like the body. I think he's got a a cool stance, sort of a short and stocky look. Mm -hmm. um, but his head sculpt is awful. His vehicle mode is equally awful. Yeah. He looks like a hatchback. <laughs> he does. He does. It's just I don't know. I'm not I'm not pleased with him. I don't don't necessarily like the color scheme either. I mean I'm happy that he's blue, but it would have been good if he was a darker blue. Or red. No. <laughs> no. He Age just I don't argument. know. Uh, aside Age from Aside from the pile drivers, uh, this figure does not appeal to me at all. I don't know why. Uh, Can't put my just, finger on it exactly. It just doesn't look like Rumble to me. No. That's because he doesn't turn into a tape and fit into someone's chest. <laughs> well, I don't mind that as much. It's just that uh, the aesthetically, uh, the figure, I find it ugly. Um, yeah. There's there's too much kibble hanging off of his shoulders. And... Uh, I don't know. Let me uh, share the screen here. That way, people can can view it uh, as as I'm viewing it here. He's sort of got the uh, yeah. This the Armada sideswipe syndrome going on there. Yeah, uh, I, I think it takes some design cues like the uh, the pile drivers and stuff from the uh, the alternator version too. Although the alternator version is actually built in to the uh, to the arms, and also on the alternator version, uh, what makes it look a lot like it is the alternator version was also stu uh, stubby like this, and had the uh, the really big thick shoulders. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And I like uh, the alternator version because he was red. I always just said that it was a packaging error. It should have been called Frenzy. Yeah. I referred to him as Frenzy on the show like, when I had him. I think they don't like Frenzy okay. as a name. That's why no. they always release Rumble, no matter what color. color he is. If if you're looking at the window, uh, uh, there's some pictures of the uh, of the alt mode, and he is definitely a hatchback. Now I do like the uh, the Decepticon insignia where like the uh, the car logo would be. That that is a nice touch, but. Um, I probably didn't notice it. In the... Is that a Suzuki oh, yeah. of some sort? Uh, it's probably a, like a, a Suzuki or I'm something. I'm looking at the headlights. I'm trying to figure out exactly what car that's designed from. I'm not exactly sure. It kind of looks like a Kia as well. Nothing I want to drive. I don't think it's cool enough for the for the, for the Cassetticons. I don't see them being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to turn into a hatchback. Well, the thing is, as being a hatchback, you could have Prime be a big truck and it could fit in the trailer easily, or Soundwave be a truck, go in his trailer instead of his take back door. Except for Soundwave is already a predator truck. He can get upgraded. But, um, 
Yeah, those pictures come from uh, Kapow Toys uh, over in the UK, and uh, we uh, we thank them for uh, for sharing those images with the, uh, the community. Uh, gives a good uh, preview of the figure coming up. Uh, me, for one, uh, like I said, I, I'm getting really picky with my new stuff that I'm uh, I'm buying. I'm going back and uh, trying to collect more classics and stuff like that. So. I'm not really as concerned with uh, the prime stuff now. If if they do if come out with a breakdown over here in the U.S. eventually, I would like to get that one. Uh, I may pick up the Voyager uh, uh, Dreadwing, but uh, aside from that, I'm I'm not really uh, really into that one. Any uh, any other thoughts on Prime Rumble? I wonder if we're going to see him in the show. Him or Iron Hmm. Good question. Um, it's possible, but uh, I, I, I'm leaning more toward these guys are fillers uh, than actual characters that are in the show. But um, I really hope Iron Hide comes in. I mean, it's such a cool design. It is. It is. A, it is a really cool design. But um, plus, he kind of got the shaft in Dark of the Moon. It'd be nice to see him come back. Yeah. Well, Depending on what happens to Bulkhead, maybe he'll be their new bruiser. Eventually he'll get shot in the face by Megatron, though. <laughs> well, I, I, th I think the reason that they... Uh, they they Didn't they say at BotCon something about uh, they didn't want to have uh, Ironhide in this series because it, it would confuse kids too yeah. much? Yeah, they thought it would confuse kids. Well, well, like, he's dead in the movie. I just don't follow that that jump of well, logic. Megatron you know. and Starscream were dead in the movie, too. Exactly, exactly. But they did mention something like that at BotCon, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And it just... It's yeah. not official canon. They can always change their mind. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, it has, uh, they, haven't been, they haven't in the show said he's dead, so he can still appear at any time. Yeah. Um... We'll move on. Uh, magazine scans of upcoming Arms Microns. Uh, anybody have thoughts on these? Link, please. I am good. So it looks we like... all, as all of us are like, what are we doing? No, we're waiting. I'm looking we're at waiting. the pictures. <laughs> Okay, so they have waiting. pictures of uh, Weaponizer's Optimus. Mm -hmm. Is that some sort of like sword that turns into the Matrix? I can't really tell. Um, so Weaponizer's Optimus. Yes, that's totally a sword that turns into the Matrix. It totally looks like they took Weaponizer uh, Optimus and uh, did away with the junky, uh, well, no... There's the, the weapons that come out of the front. Yeah, he's got the weaponizer gimmick. But um, if you see the panel underneath the where the vehicle mode is, and then the very first panel up at the top, he's got the sword, and you can see it down there is the Matrix. Hmm. Which is a freaking humongous Matrix. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the sword changes into that. We've never I totally chest, want that Gaia Mega or Gaia Unicron. That looks so awesome. I know, it's it's a shame that we might not actually ever get that. Uh, it's kind of weird that he has like this engulf Megatron engulf Optimus mode. Um, and it looks kind of, I mean, it looks kind of sloppily thrown together. And he looks to turn into some sort of I don't know rock jet or something. Is this the yeah. first time we've seen his alt mode? I think so. And he has a he has a micron. What does it turn into? Looks it's like some sort some of drill of little, tank. Yeah, a little drill tank looking thing. I think it's uh, really weird that uh, the Gaia Unicron can combine with Prime. I, I don't get that. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I think it's just playability and play pattern for the kids. Because it also combines with Megatron as well, it looks like. Hmm. Interesting. But, uh, the, I'm trying to, I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> oh, and they also have, uh, it looks like they also have, um, Arms Micron 
iron hide there too. He was totally getting released as iron hide first. In Japan. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yep, and he's got a micro off, that turns into his cannon. At first, I thought that was the uh, Cyberverse. And then I looked at the robot mode. Yeah, that's definitely the deluxe. I don't think they've released any of the Cyberverse figures over there, have they? I'm not sure. I haven't been following. All I know is they released Breakdown in a mold that we're not getting here. And I said, screw Prime. I'm going to love the show, but I'm going to quit collecting the toys. Yeah. Uh, Unless we get that Ironhide. I love Ironhide as a character. I would buy that. Yeah, if they, if they release the the deluxe mold as Ironhide, I'm I'm with you. I would get that, but uh, not as cut. Yeah, I'm probably going to... They're just getting too expensive for me. That's the only thing that's going to stop me from... I love Transformers Prime. It's, I'll probably end up collecting what I can, but I'm going to have to be choosy now because they're just getting too expensive. Uh, let's see here. I'm... I need to type out a message here. Hold on. Uh, well, um, I'm, the next... I'm... Oh, go ahead. I was going to let you type out your message. Um, in regards to like, the toys, a lot of other podcasters have said that it's just like the toys are getting smaller and they're getting cheaper, I guess. Um, but yet, on a lot of other scales, it's just like they're becoming... Uh, weaker in construction. Yeah, they're getting a little thinner yeah. with the plastic and stuff. Try to save money. Yeah, that's the same thing I was I was mentioning with Arachnid. Is that I mean she's like overly, uh, overly cheap. Yeah, it's just that they've become not so fantastic recently, and I'm not entirely sure why or what the reason for that is. It, it, Kind of bothers me, <laughs> to be well, honest. I know we did, didn't we have the massive designer shift at Hasbro? Like Eric Siebenhaler left, and they got like a new design team. Because uh, mm -hmm. the last things he did were the first edition toys, and then pretty much all the you know the prime line is with the new designers. And I think yeah. I think that's probably the best explanation as to why we've seen such a decline in quality. Not well, to rag on those designers too much, but they just I, haven't I don't been see doing it as long. I don't think it's so much the designs that we have uh, that I have problems with. I like the designs. It's it's just the the production quality, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that uh, um, the price of uh, uh, the petroleum and or whatever you know they use to make the uh, the ABS plastic has gone up. Uh, so to get the the figures out at a uh, cost-effective price. They have to raise the prices uh, to match what they're spending on uh, on these figures. Um, but I don't know. It's it's. I don't think it's so much. I don't. I can't. I don't think we should blame the the the, the design crew, the new design crew, uh, for the increase in prices or the cheapness of the figures. Uh, I think that's unfair. Well, no, I wouldn't do it for the prices. I was just thinking with the designs of the toys. I, like, I was thinking specifically of Arachnid. I mean, that thing is just a design nightmare. And I would blame the designers for that. But, I mean, there are... It's not just the Prime toys. Yeah, I mean, before Arachnid, looking at all of my toys, um, before Arachnid, almost every single one of them is completely perfect in design. There's only one, with the exception of Knockout, um, and has slight issues um, in the actual toy itself that it's just like I mean the unfortunately that's just kind of how it works I mean in in the uh, in the generations line we had a ton of toys that were oh my god they were fantastic and then a couple of them that were kind of not and it's just kind of I guess luck of the draw sometimes depending on what they can do and and how they can work it and with the with the budget that they are given for each toy. Yeah, sometimes you kind of wish that, you know, each figure came with a, a designer's signature or something. So you could be like, well, this guy only designed this stuff. I'm going to buy his. But this, this, okay. No. This guy's like, so I'm never going to buy his toys. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the McFarlane figures. You know, you, uh, you like McFarlane's work, so you buy McFarlane figures, you know. Um, maybe, yeah. ooh, maybe that's somebody we need to get on the Transformers team. Yeah. No. 
I well, want my Transformers to actually transform. Speaking of that, when it when it comes to like prices, it's crazy that those highly detailed McFarlane figures haven't gone up in price in like seven years. But Transformers is going crazy at the moment and getting smaller. You know, I, in a way, I kind of buy the uh, the explanation that you know rising costs and everything like that. But at the same time, I think it's kind of a cop out too. Uh, for that reason, I think they're using the popularity of Transformers as an excuse to use it as a cash cow. Okay, well, let's raise prices on this this really popular sell. stuff. Yeah, because it will sell. Well, also you have to keep in mind Transformers has been an incredible bargain for so long. I think it's just a settling of the market. I mean, just when you look at other toy lines, like I collect, you know, some of the Avengers figures from the Marvel six inch guys. Those things have been upwards of fifteen bucks for years. Uh, you know, and a deluxe. Transformer, you know, has been about six inches tall for the same amount of time, and you can get that for ten dollars compared to fifteen for the Marvel figure. Uh, and then you just look at the complexity of what you get. The Marvel figure, it's just it's an action figure with so many points of articulation, but it's relatively simple in design and construction compared to a Transformer. But the Transformer was cheaper, and it it, it probably shouldn't have been so. So I, I think we're just finally seeing a settling of the market in that they're catching up to the price they should have been all along. I mean, ten dollars for the deluxes was incredibly cheap compared to other toys. So it doesn't make sense that deluxes just made a what is it? It was like they were around thirteen dollar jump or something like that. Mine never hit the thirteen dollar mark. Uh, my my Walmart was actually selling them for around ten. Um, uh, most of the generations line that I picked up was around like twelve eighty eight. They're now they would have sales for nine ninety nine, but the regular price is always twelve eighty eight. Well, my Walmart, I guess I got lucky. My Walmart always was around nine dollars, or not nine dollars, but ten dollars. Um, and I never really variated. Um, maybe once or twice, but usually within a month they went back down again. Um, but the deluxes took such a jump, but the Voyagers haven't. They took like a dollar jump, and it's like. Charge more for the Voyagers. I guess it's because they know they wouldn't ever sell Voyager if it cost twenty five or thirty dollars. Um, but I don't see anyone sinking that much money into the Lexus. You know, that's that's you know that's what the price of Voyagers once was sixteen dollars. I'm I'm kind of wondering if maybe they didn't have so many different size classes if they could afford to um, actually release them at a cheaper price point. You know, they're, they're not spending as much on development and production on all these different size classes, but offering uh, fewer figures at a lower uh, lower cost. You know, figures that, that are on par with what we're, we're used to as far as quality uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that would be possible, but you know, instead of getting you know four deluxes and 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 two new Voyagers and a bunch of Cyberverse, like do away with Cyberverse and maybe do away with uh, with two Voy uh, two Voyagers and have all deluxes. I mean, I would be fine with that. I know. I, know. I, I think even with I don't think that would bring the cost down much. So I think what you'd be looking at is fifteen dollar deluxes, but we maybe maybe get them the size. And quality we, we used to get, like say with Revenge of the Fallen, um, which you know I'd be okay with that too. I'd pay fifteen bucks for a good quality toy. It's I think what's really got so many fans in an uproar is it's not so much the size the size decrease of the toy or the price increase is the fact that both happen simultaneously. You know if the toys had stayed the same price and just gotten smaller, or if they'd stayed the same size and just the price went up a little, I don't think there'd be nearly as much complaining. It's the fact that both happened at the same time. Well, that and they feel cheaper. And that's that's something else. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but even that, if they just stayed the same price, people wouldn't be complaining too much. Yeah, I wouldn't complain. If it, if it was nine dollars right now, I would have bought every new uh, prime figure I saw the other day. But right, but I have to be picky now. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you go back to what the price of deluxes were just two or three years ago, like nine ninety nine, uh, wasn't it that? That long ago that it, they were like nine ninety nine, um, now they're fifteen bucks. You know, so 
you know, if if you could buy if you bought a figure, a deluxe figure now at nine ninety nine, you buy two of them for twenty. Uh, whereas, you know, now if you buy them at today's prices, two of them, uh, two figures would cost you thirty bucks. You know, ten dollars more. That's a huge, huge difference, and that is just the crux of what we're talking about here. You know, uh, you know, a lot of fans. You know, I know we mention it. We've mentioned it quite a bit on uh, on recent podcasts. But it's at the forefront of a lot of fans' minds, and it's making a lot of our buying decisions uh, m- more difficult because, you know, quite frankly, toys are expendable uh, income for a lot of people. You know, they they buy uh, toys because it's a hobby. They they love to collect it, and they can spare ten bucks, twenty bucks here and there. But whenever you're wanting to buy two, three, four figures and they're more expensive than they used to be, it becomes less of an impulse buy and more of a, hmm, do I really, really want this figure? You know, and yeah, I, I think it's hurting the fandom, really. I think it's hurting hurting the line. I know my impulse buys dropped significantly once they went over nine ninety nine. When we started seeing twelve eighty eight, I was a lot less likely to just pick something up on a whim. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I actually, because I'm a big Halo fan, so I always go look at the Halo figures, but I've always chosen Transformers over Halo figures, and I was actually there the other day, you know, and I was like, you know, these are eleven ninety nine, where I still I have to pay $16 for the, the Transformers over there. I might actually start buying some of these Halo figures now, because they're cheaper on me. Let's see here. Well, just by comparison, I've, 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 like I said, I've stopped buying Transformers Prime toys just over the not being able to find bulkhead issue because I, I was otherwise up to date with the exception of Arachnid, and uh, you know I, I haven't been buying any Prime stuff, but I've been hitting the crap out of these new turtles because they're you know under eight bucks. So I mean, it makes a big difference. When it's under eight dollars. I'm a lot more likely to toss a couple in the cart than when they're fifteen. Exactly. That's that's why whenever I picked up the uh, the Donatello, I, I actually really really considered it uh, because of the uh, uh, the price point seven seventy seven, uh, and it's a, a character that I like, you know. Uh, but I ultimately wound up not deciding to buy it because it would cause me to buy other figures that I really don't care about. So. Um, but but I can t- totally get what you're saying. And Mariah Baby sees something else that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, you I forget we're... make that much noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you think we're live streaming. Keep forgetting so we're on live. <laughs> people are seeing you laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I keep so forgetting we're on live. <laughs> they even made, they even made an action figure a figure of her uh, her here uh, uh, in Great Britain a couple Heard years ago her? called Spastic. <laughs> oh no! I cursed in great. Uh, I, I cursed in British. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um. So well, did we, we lose her? Her her video feed seems to have frozen. Yeah, I think she did. Oh well, so we'll find we'll, out what we'll, she's we'll laughing about back. later. We we do need to move on. Uh, Arms Micron Swerve in package uh, thoughts. It's the breakdown mold that I still can't have. <laughs> yes. It's actually oh, got a new head, though. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, it kind of works for Swerve, too, in my opinion. He was that kind of vehicle. Sport yeah. utility. And, and the colors work on that yeah. toy, too. You know what? The, the only problem I have with that, I know he is more of a, uh, um, a visor, um, but it looks like he has big... Uh, Humongous, like blue eyes, uh, almost like an animated bumblebee type face, um, which I don't think they really intended for him to look. But that's uh, unless you look close to see the eyes behind it. He looks like he's got these big, huge blue eyes. Let's see here. Seems like I saw a picture earlier uh, of him out of package with there is the eyes a little closer. Um, I don't know why I didn't get that one ready to. I 
can't remember where I saw it though. I thought it was on TFW. It might be. But, um, you know, so we don't have dead air here. I, I, I really, really oh, like the, uh, the figure, uh, the, the way it looks. Um, it's this. Uh, the, the, it works for Swerve. Bottom line, I mean, because the original Swerve was it was kind of a pickup truck slash SUV with camper or what have you. Um, so um, I, I guess he could have passed as an armored truck. I guess maybe. Was yeah. Swerve a repaint of one of the mini bots? Uh, uh, yeah, Swerve was a repaint uh, and a slight retool of uh, gears. Uh, gears, yeah. Uh, gears had a different. Uh, well, Swerve had a different face uh, than Gears, and I think that oh, was wow. the only difference. This really high close-up they have here of this head, high resolution. It uh, it looks like he has regular eyes under. A visor is just instead of one solid visor goes way across. It's like two lenses. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's definitely a visor. It's much larger than the eyes. It's almost like he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah, but it's like if you don't look at it very close, it looks like he has really big eyes. Well, yeah. as does a person wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Some of these girls wear glasses so big they look like giant insects. Looks like <laughs> some Transformers do Bug have eyes. big eyes. It kind, of, it kind of looks like he's supposed to have like a cute looking face until you realize there's eyes back behind those. Mm -hmm. Gee, Swerve, those are awfully big eyes you have. Those are all the better <laughs> to see you with, Autobot. I don't know if you notice this, but doesn't his face or his whole head sculpt kind of look like the maximal symbol from Beast Machines? If you look at it straight on. Is that the maximal symbol from Beast Machines or is that the Predacon symbol from Beast Wars? Uh, it looks more like the maximal symbol from Beast Machines to me. Come here, Google. It doesn't look like that Predacon symbol from Beast Wars. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit like the maximal symbol from Beast Machines. I just wish the white was a little more uh, bone white, not the creamy white. Welcome back, Mariah Baby. Ah. <laughs> My computer decided it didn't like what I was doing, so and, it was and, like, yeah, you get to shut down now. I'm like, oh, great. We're talking and, about and, Swerve. Yeah, Swerve, the repaint, the repaint and retool of Breakdown. Arms Yay. Micron. What? You guys waited for me to come back, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. We, we you kinda, wanted me to talk about kinda it. I kind of dragged you. it out a little bit for you. Okay, What's your good. thoughts on it? I think he's fantastic. Um, I've actually... Um, throwing money at them already. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's cool. Um, it's it's the breakdown mold, so I have to have it. Um, I think he's fantastic, and I will probably end up getting every single repaint that he has, um, just like I'm doing with the uh, with Lockdown. I've got, like, every single mold of him, so I kind of have to have every single mold of this guy. I kind of dig his arms micron too. That the the buzz. I do too. Ooh. It's it unfortunately like the buzz saw reminds me of Ratchet. It reminds me much more of Ratchet than it does of Swerve. Yeah. But it's it's interesting to see him in this in this fantastic red color. Um, the head sculpt is very Swerve. Oh, that's about all I can say about that. The it's it's very strange to see him in red though because it's just I'm so used to the blue of Breakdown. The um, transparent paneling on his abdomen is throwing me off. Yeah, that's. I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. I I don't care for the windows on the forearms. That's that's my big beef with the figure. Well, dude, when it's with when it's with breakdown, it's not as bad because the windows are like a dark tinted like regular window color. But for whatever reason, apparently they have to go with this really pretty blue, which is nice, but it stands out so much against the Well, I mean, when, you, when you notice the hands are right in front of the windows, and mm -hmm. it's almost like like the back of his wrists are nothing but windshield. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it would yeah, realistically much what it is. be very brittle. Yeah, staring at my figure here, and that's pretty much what it is. 
the uh, yeah, the, I mean that the, the one thing that I just don't understand with Swerve is to why his uh, why his abdomen is that strange color. I mean, uh, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, if if I look at breakdown here, now I realize that. Um, is that where the windshield goes? One of the windows in the truck? Uh, no, actually, and that's what that's what threw me off. Is it's just like breakdown doesn't have that, but like right here, it is that same uh, transparent color. And I was just you know trying to look at it, and now that I've figured it out, that's actually the the roof and the back paneling of his car mode. Mm. So, but again, as to why that is transparent is beyond me because literally there are no windows there. It's just transparent plastic. There is really Something no they point. they threw in there for, uh, uh, for, I guess, maybe a possible U.S. release so they can have the, that stupid Possibly. light up gimmick. Possibly. And that's the only thing that I can think of because there's no windows. And the two windows that are actually a part of this backpack um, are actually stickers. <laughs> so it's not like any color goes through them or any light goes through them anyway. So as to why it's transparent plastic might be an American thing for a possible American release that we still haven't gotten, but not sure why. I'm looking forward to him though. I'm I've got money thrown at the the Silas breakdown and and I already tossed money at them for the swerve, so just kind of biding my time and waiting for them to come in and trying to figure out where I'm going to put them because breakdown's a big figure. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, our last topic is a discussion before we move on to Prime Hurt. Um, the uh, Fall of Cybertron video game was released this past uh, week and uh, also the first DLC pack. Um, the reason for uh, th that's part of the reason why I have not gotten the uh, episode from last week out yet is because I've been playing that whenever I can and also I haven't felt good this weekend but um, uh, the uh, the game is is really awesome um, I don't want to spoil a whole lot of it and plus we talked about it for like four hours the other day uh, <laughs> so I don't know what else much much else there is for us to talk about it there's a lot to talk about for Fall of Cybertron. Yeah. But Maybe without, not so I can without talk being, about another four hours. <laughs> with, <laughs> without being spoilerific, I guess. Um, yeah, give people time to play the game first and beat it. You know, I know some I people already have. But. Is, uh, when you find out how Megatron gets his, alt, his, new, his new chassis, you are going to... It's, it's just fantastic. You're going to love it. It's a great game. Two thumbs up for me. I still have not beaten it yet, but I'm uh, according to the uh, um, the uh, the game. I'm about halfway through. Uh, granted, I've, I'm only able to play it like a couple hours a day. Um, I know earlier this uh, it came out on Tuesday, and I played it for like an hour or two on Tuesday night. I wasn't able to play it at all on Wednesday night. Or th Thursday night. I played it some Friday, didn't play it at all yesterday, and I played it some this afternoon. So, uh, you know, I'm not. Plus, I'm not trying to really blow through it because I'm, I'm I'm really wanting to absorb the story, and I, the story is just amazing. I mean, I feel like I'm jumping right right into a new story, and um, and it took uh, it takes off right where uh, Fall or War for Cybertron. Kind of left you hanging on on some plot points. Um, now, the sideburn. Did you pick up the uh, the DLC? Did you say? I, I did pick up the first DLC pack that was released day one, um, and a lot of people aren't happy about that. I wasn't exactly happy about it um, because these are these are parts that we saw in a video that you know, uh, like me and that's when I got excited that we thought that they had withheld. You know some of the parts that were going to be in the multiplayer on release. Well, it turns out that's sort of the truth, except for they decided they're going to make you pay ten dollars for it. Uh, so the mm. first pack they released um, had Ultra Magnus, Wheeljack, Blastoff, Zeta Prime, and what was that? And uh, 
Perceptor. Uh, yeah, I remember when War for Cybertron came out, and then you had the DLC packs had uh, had new maps on it. And when I tried to play online, I kept getting booted because it would try to load the new maps I didn't have. So I just pretty much learned that like when the second DLC came out, to just buy it immediately, or else I couldn't play online because I'd get booted out of yeah. matches again. I so think this, they, they probably fixed that though, because Call of Duty is much the same way. But uh, if you don't have the map packs, it only puts you in lobbies with people that actually have the map pack. Yeah, these so are these aren't map packs or right. so, you know, they're all characters. Um actually I wish I'd known that because what I did because of the War for Cybertron was as soon as I saw there was DLC, I'm like, oh I don't want to get stuck with that same problem again, so I went ahead and bought it immediately. And then I realized it was only characters. I'm like I could live without that. Yeah, a lot of the uh, actually um a lot, uh, all these DLCs, because um, there's been three DLC packs released, or not released, but announced one already released, and that was the day one one that I just talked about. Um, the bulk of what you need to have these packs run without causing uh, the people who don't buy them any issues is already in the game. And a lot of people are complaining about that, like we shouldn't have to pay to unlock something that's already in the game. But they do that so that the people who don't buy these DLCs um, don't have to hassle with only being able to play with people who don't have them, or people who have it only being able to play with people who have it. Um, and it's never fun. Um, I remember back to the Halo 2 days with new map packs. It was a lot like that, where if you had new, if you had the new maps, you could only play with the people with the new maps. And a lot of times, you're the minority when you buy DLC. Um, so the other two map packs they announced, uh, the next map pack is coming out on the 9th of September. And it is the Dinos, Dinobot Destructor Pack. And this is going to introduce you know, Grimlock, Slug, Snarl, and Swoop into multiplayer. Um, you meant Slag, right? I meant Slug. He's Slug in the game. <laughs> Flag. Um, and then there is the Massive Fury pack, which, aside from adding the pre-order content into the game, um, which means you're going to get you know G1 Optimus Prime, G2 Bruticus, uh, the Megatron pistol, and the uh, Slingshot, which is Shockwave's gun. Um, you're also going to get Hound. Um, <clears throat> Shrapnel, or not, well, yeah, I'll just go ahead and call him Shrapnel. Sharpshot is technically his name in, in, Warf in the Fall of Cybertron. Um, you're going to get Hard Shell and Kickback. So you're going to get the Insecticons with that as well. Um, and that comes out the 25th of September. So by the end of September, multiplayer will have dinosaurs and insects running around causing mayhem. I'm all for the dinosaurs. Now, because I, I haven't actually played mine yet. When do you get to use the G1 Optimus Prime model? Is that multiplayer or is that anywhere in the single, campaign? That's single player campaign, I believe. Oh, nice. Now, I have I have not turned it on, but uh, I, actually, I think I'm past the uh, place where you use Prime anyway. So, um, uh, now Cyber, you play it on the PC, correct? Yes. Okay, and I've got it for PS3. Mariah Baby, are you playing uh, Fall of Cybertron? I wish. I don't yet have a system to play it on. So I'm just kind of biding my time and waiting until I get that thing that everybody needs to be able to spend money, which is a job. Um, as soon as I get a job, though, I'm going to throw money at, at GameStop because they actually have a sale right now on, like, an Xbox for, like, $100. Um, and it's like two year. You have to. It's an Xbox, and then it's connect with a two year subscription to. Yeah, it's the two year. Uh, uh, Xbox Live for like one hundred and fifteen dollars, yeah. and I'm like, that's totally mine. So yeah. Um, well, so I'm still waiting on that. Sign up for a two year contract. Yeah, it's a two year contract yeah. with with Xbox Live, but I want Xbox Live anyway, so it's yeah. not a big deal. But yeah, I, I'm still waiting on that whole. Oh my god, I need a job before I do that. Um, I had. Didn't pre-order the game, and I wish I had, because some of the skins are kind of cool. But 
I'm still biding my time and covering my ears and going la 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 every time anybody talks about it. And they'll be released, you know, by the end of September, so you won't miss out. Yeah. On how long. But I mean, yeah, this just be be prepared to be blown away with some of the show, uh, some of the game. Well, all of the it's game. It's amazing. Actually. Um, you know, like like in our War for Cybertron episode, we talked about how War for Cybertron was a great Transformers game, but you could you really wouldn't go as far to compare it to other you know AAA titles, you know, mm-hmm. to any of the big things. Fall of Cybertron. You will definitely compare it to those titles. It is just heads and you know, heads and tails beyond War for Cybertron. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's right up there. I mean, I, I can't state enough. Now, I haven't not I have not myself played any of the multiplayer because I want to finish the campaign first, and then I'll dive into the multiplayer, which kind of may hurt me because. Um, I know that uh, uh, you know people will be on there and they will be ranked up, and I'll be here. I'm I'm a noob getting in there, and mm-hmm. and these people will be smashing my head in. But I really don't mind that as much right now because I mean I got the game primarily for the uh, for the story. So I mean it's it's really awesome. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on uh, Fall of Cybertron since its release and the DLC? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we believe uh, that'll wrap up the news segment. Uh, we'll move on to our uh, discussion of Transformers Prime, uh, the episode Hurt that uh, aired this past weekend on The Hub. So if you are listening and you have not seen the episode, be prepared to be spoiled if you listen further. So uh, without further ado... Transformers Prime discussion starts now. Um, Transformers Prime episode uh, hurt. Anybody want to go over uh, briefly what uh, went down in the episode? All right, Mariah, <laughs> baby, her hand went right up. Let's see. All right. Well, um, in the episode of Hurt. If you uh, got a chance to watch it, you know what went on. If you didn't, well, here it is. Um, So Bulkhead, as you might have remembered from the last episode we ever saw, um, became hurt, and uh, we were afraid that he would die. Um, what What was the promo for that episode? Is it? I think it was Miko and Miko and Wheeljack team up to go on revenge or something like that. Tumblr was going nuts, like they were all freaking the hell out because it was, oh my god, it's Bulkhead is dead, and what's gonna happen? I'm gonna stop watching the show if Bulkhead's dead. Like they were just freaking out. I was like, you guys, shut up, <laughs> shut up. It's okay. You, you can get revenge on someone who's just been hurt really badly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the it same was... time, I I saw other fans, you know, freaking out like, oh, it's just more of the same. They did. They... They... They have no guts. <laughs> well, I, I thought it, I thought it was funny because they were just having this big old freak out, and I'm just like, "Hey, did you like forget what happened to the best Decepticon ever?" Hello. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, Wheeljack came in and was going to do something rash, and really wanted to get revenge on the one that hurt Bulkhead, and Miko knew, and Miko being the slightly insane and might be mentally retarded Japanese human that <laughs> my <retarded>. that, that, <laughs> that my boyfriend has determined speaks with a Russian accent for some reason. You know she um, kinda does. She talks with a Russian accent and my boyfriend Kyle know that and I'm like, yeah, whatever. But anyway, yeah. So she went to go help him out and uh, they did pretty good as a team. Uh she did recon when they first went in for the uh Went to the the Energon mine, uh, trying to find Hardshell uh, to try and get back at him. Um, I liked the little cameo appearances of uh, Knockout. I thought that was kind of funny. His his random little appearances. We'll get to those in a sec. And it was like in the end, uh, Hardshell beating up Wheeljack and 
she managed to save the day again. The, the human that, for whatever the hell reason, knows how to work Cybertronian equipment. I don't get it. <laughs> well, well they have spent two years in their base looking at the computers and messing with them, so... She, uh, at least you just press the button that, that Wheeljack pressed to, you know... Um, to release the missile? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it is not as bad as Wrath yeah, somehow the... coding... In Cybertronian and giving no, sound virus. no, no. He was coding. <laughs> he was coding in English, and when he gave it to Ratchet, his system wrote it in, in Cybertronian. So that was actually not Raph's thing. And I will defend Raph till the end of time. I hate Raph. <laughs> A lot of people do. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily. The only way. The only way that I can possibly justify that is that Miko saw him fire the missile and was like, oh, that's how it works, because she can't read Cybertronian. <laughs> None of us can. But apparently she can, and I don't get it. Maybe Chuck um, Norris was there and Wheeljack's ship with her and showed her how to get some ass. Must have done something. Does, I'm, I'm starting to figure out, I'm starting to wonder if she actually has, like, relations to Tony Stark or something. <laughs> Tony Stark uh, is the ladies' man, if he ever went yeah, to Japan. Yeah, he is. Um, it's not like it's too far fetched to think that she <laughs> might be able to read Cybertronian. Yeah, Ref can't understand beat boops. No. Um, a couple <laughs> of points that I loved about it. Um, for whatever the heck reason, or not. I guess. I guess if you know me, it's not a big reason. But the. There's a sludge on my sludge. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> random. <laughs> The, the comment that Knockout made about not being able to buff his armor very well without breakdown, that made me really happy as a oh, breakdown yeah. fan. That, that sounds really bad. He can't buff himself <laughs> properly without breakdown's help. <laughs> he like, needs help. Uh, I, it's I, always I'm, better with help. Always yeah. better with help. Um, the other thing that I really like, they don't get to talk all that much, so the Vehicons, like... When they made the comment to the Insecticons um, about them being freeloaders or whatever the hell it was, savages. And, thank you, and savages, and set them off. I thought that was fantastic. I was like, "You guys never talk, ever." I love you. Talk more. Um, knockouts, fantastic girly scream. <laughs> when one of the Insecticons, no, excuse me, one of the Vehicons gets thrown at the door, and he just barely misses getting hit by it. Yeah, that that look it was pretty funny. Um the uh one of the one of the parts in the very beginning of the movie when Miko was riding in Bumblebee and she's like doing the air guitar thing and like rocking out. She's actually I can't remember what she says now, but she she's like making up lyrics to this song and she was talking about messing up knockout's paint and <laughs> Yeah, it was uh from I, their I uh I can't remember the lyrics, but it was pretty much uh, about their encounter with him. In the yeah, it was. Yeah, it was there. I thought that was fantastic. I was like, "You are awesome, Miko." At points, you are awesome. But yeah, any other else thoughts? Because I'll just keep rambling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. uh, what was what? Hard shell. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he's pretty much dead, right? So, so much for David K. being in the show. It's, uh, so I don't know. It's, for me, it seems like it could have been up in the air. He definitely could I, have I think it's up in the air, yeah. Well, he was blown to bits. I mean, with the one cool. scene after the explosion, we saw, like, a piece of him laying on the ground when all the well, other... could just, just be his dead. arm or something, maybe. He just looked pretty messed up. Uh, I assume he's probably dead, which kind of sucks, because uh, Hard Shell was awesome. <laughs> I mean, that fight scene between him and Wheeljack was... Like the best fight scene in Transformers Prime so far. I mean, it was the, the he was just freaking beating the crap out of Wheeljack. Um, and it, it's yeah. sad to see you know, especially David K. of all you know voice actors. It's, it's sad to see the character he was voicing only be around for two episodes. Yeah, um, I'd like to see uh, Gary Chalk get involved in uh, Transformers Prime somehow. 
it'd be really awesome. <laughs> it'd be it'd be kind of cool if he was another one of the Insecticons, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's like Hard Shell goes down and another one steps up to take his place, and he's voiced by Gary Chalk. He'd be sharp shot or kick back. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Um, but I too, uh, I really like this episode. Um, I, I like the the part where uh, um, Knockout freaks out whenever. Uh, uh, his paint gets scuffed, and he's like, "Hey, I was buffing that. I just finished buffing yeah, that. Yeah, I just finished buffing. That. Yeah, I was so like, mad. They need to get out of here. It it made me really happy to see him clean again. It was just like yeah. through through most of the episode, he was just still dirty and and scratched up. Uh, one of the things that I loved about just the animation in like every single one of these so far has still been my favorite, and this episode is no exception. Um, it was when Megatron was walking by the four Decepticons. I can't remember who it was. Um, uh, Soundwave and oh, it was yeah, that was it was Soundwave, yeah. uh, Soundwave knockout, Dreadwing. Dreadwing and then the Insecticon yeah. and all three of them flinch but the second he gets to Soundwave, Soundwave doesn't move. Yeah. He just stands all th there. All three of them kind of flinch and like oh my god he's on us and then Soundwave's just like whatever. Well, Soundwave did his job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's because behind the uh, quiet exterior or yeah, quiet exterior beats the heart of a uh, like a lethal killing machine. <laughs> A lethal killing machine with no face. Yes. Yes. Um, I had a thought, and it just completely went, come back, thought. <laughs> come back. The thought doesn't love you. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Hawk, what window through my thought went? <laughs> Brain fart. Yeah. Um... Any other thoughts on this episode? Um, Miko was useful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miko and was terrified out of her mind. Really in the mind. <laughs> well, I, I think I think this episode colored her in a lot more than. I mean, she she had a lot of fleshing out in previous episodes, but I think this episode drew a lot more fans in for Miko herself personally. I think because um, she was she actually had purpose in this episode. Not she wasn't just this annoying little teenage girl that was trying to uh, to uh, see the big robots fight. You know, she was actually in there trying to do something, and she actually did. You know, and it was believable. You know, I mean, it wasn't, you know, she just goes in there and, and does something that makes a Transformer blow up. I mean, she she actually controlled Wheeljack's ship and, and did something believable. So uh, I, think, I think she was really awesome. This was a really awesome Miko episode. Uh, and also Wheeljack, you know, um, was really at the forefront of this episode, too. Um showing his characterization and his camaraderie uh, with uh, Bulkhead. You know, how dedicated he is to his fellow Wrecker. Um, I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I've always actually, I've always actually liked Nico better than the other two. Um, mostly just because Jack is sort of like, uh, I don't know. I know he's he's supposed to be sort of like Prime, the reluctant kind of leader, um, sort of like a young Prime's. Uh, but Miko, I, I guess I like her because she sort of reminds me of Sorry, and I always liked Sorry and Transformers animated. Um, it was the first like human character I didn't want to die. Uh, so yeah, I, I actually liked uh, you know seeing some more Miko story progression in this. Uh, what do you guys think about the possibility of break or uh, bulkhead not being a fully functioning part of their team anymore? I'm actually that, super excited about that. <laughs> I, I'm de I'm depressed about it because I like bulkhead. Yeah, uh, I like bulkhead as well, but I'm just wondering what they mean by that. 
he's he will no longer be fully functioning as far as I know which is I, it's it's gonna be really interesting to see what they go with I mean I mean what 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 could that possibly I mean could it be is he like a vegetable transformer or? He's gonna be in a wheelchair <laughs> and have like, crutches. Can we, can we wait? Can we shout courage at him? Yes. <laughs> He's going to be the new Chip Chase. Bulkhead has courage. <laughs> you know, he'll, well, he'll, there'll be an episode where he'll be all depressed, like oh, I want to go help out in the fight, but I'm not really capable. No, you can do it, Bulkhead. You have courage. And I hear Raph telling him that. <laughs> You can do it. You have courage. <laughs> You're never truly handicapped as long as you have courage. <laughs> I I wouldn't even know what that would entail. I mean, like extensive damage, I guess, to the... What the fuck? I don't even know what the hell he said. The toxin is the Well, yeah, the, the, the toxin being the biggest problem. Um, he had some damage to his cerebral cortex or whatever the hell he which means he, Which means if he's handicapped, he's going to be mentally retarded. Because <laughs> it's his brain that's screwed up. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, what? I wouldn't even know what that would entail. I mean, we don't. We haven't had. We haven't yet had a single Cybertronian that's been just like, yeah, you are too handicapped now to fight in this war. So what do we do? Like, it, it's a new avenue, and I'm excited to see it play out. Um, I'm a little bummed out. I'm not a gigantic fan of Bulkhead. But I am still interested to hear what they have to do with him and to see what happens. I mean, if he if he's becomes like Ratchet and has to stay in the base all the time, that would kind of suck and would be kind of a waste of a character. If they can fix the problem by maybe giving him a smaller body, uh, giving him an upgrade or something, I don't know. That, would it's really interesting, uh, something that I have actually been wondering because it's like I mean, yeah, you can if your car breaks or whatever you can fix it, but after a while things just stop working and it's just better to get a new car. Yeah. <laughs> as sad as that thought is, is okay. No, we're just gonna break. We're just gonna no. Okay, we're just bulkhead is done. Can, so can, we're gonna get a new robot. <laughs> is will defeat Silas and take Breakdown's body and put bulkhead in it. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Well, maybe maybe that'll be the maybe that'll be the whole thing. Is is debilitated bulkhead will have to face off against Silas, who now possesses the body of his arch enemy. And he's so mentally messed up that he'll think it's actually still breakdown. He won't. Oh God, Silas! <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but it'll probably be some overcoming adversity set, sort of thing, you know. Oh what, my God! That what, would suck. what if uh, what if uh, Bulkhead has a has a partial transformation, all of uh, all of um, Beast Machine's rat trap, and yeah. where he he transforms and his back half looks like a little wheelchair. And he... <laughs> guard Guard says in the uh, live stream, um, he'll probably now have the personality of animated Bulkhead. Which I'm gonna say, oh, if he, I'm gonna say I've been waiting for him to get a little more animated bulkhead. And then, you know, if 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 bulkhead doesn't squeak when he walks, I will be sad. <laughs> <laughs> no interesting what? note about Rat Trap. You know, since you brought that up, uh, originally he was intended to be fully uh, crippled in Beast Wars. Um. Fact of the day, Beast Wars Fact of the Day. I did yeah. not know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that. so it sort of shined through, and uh, they, they decided to go with that plot point in you know, Beast Wars. Hmm. So Bulkhead would not be the first uh, paraplegic Transformer, I guess? <laughs> no, he would not. I, I definitely <laughs> look Stephen forward Hawking, to... He is, Stephen Hawking, he is not... I definitely look forward to seeing what happens with it. Um, it is a character development that insanely interests me, and it's one of those it's one of those Cybertronian medical things that it's just like I've <laughs> you I need to stop it. <laughs> My, go away! You are not helping. <laughs> no, you're not being helpful. No. Um, yeah, it's it's something that I've been incredibly interested. I'm not watching you. 
Um, yeah, medical, just some Cybertronian medical thing that I've been insanely interested in, in working with and well, learning. If, if they can't repair it. Bumblebee's simple uh, voice box, I mean... Can't, well, I keep thinking of it as, like, they can't necessarily, it's not necessarily that they can't replace it, it's that, like, they don't, maybe they don't have the parts for it or whatever. I think... Well, I think it was explained in the TCOG episode. It was biological as opposed to technological. Oh, point. Yeah, they just they can't just uh, they can't just you know hammer out a new one with uh -huh. some spare parts. You know. That's the yeah point. Probably the same reason. I mean, the same reason again why uh, breakdowns optic is still missing. Um, yeah. A lot of people have theories about that one, but yeah, again with the biological thing, that's an idea. Um. I'm hoping they stick with this. I mean, like some people were like, "Oh, no surprise, they don't kill, they don't kill breakdown, or they don't kill bulkhead." You know, this show has no guts. But finding out that, well, maybe he's going to be fully paralyzed, or not fully paralyzed, but but fully, uh, you know, debil debilitated. Um, I hope they stick with that. I mean, it's it's an interesting, an interesting story development that we didn't expect. You know? Interesting. Yeah, it's something that I'm sure looking forward to seeing one way or the other. It's really more gutsy than actually killing him off, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, also. You know, the, I think we've beat the episode to death now. Um, kind of looking forward to next week's episode. Uh, we have been given a hint that Cliff Jumper makes a return, so I guess we'll hear the uh, the voice of the Rock once again. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's actually the Rock yet. Do and we? the oh. TFW has been very shot, very got different opinions on it. It's like, is it or is it not? Like some of the mannerisms, some of the way that he says it. Uh, granted, we didn't get very much of Cliff Jumper to begin with, but to be fair, it's just the Rock's voice. It's not like he's doing anything with it, so it's not like we have to like listen for different cues for them to be. And granted, again, all we got was like a couple of seconds here and there of Cliff Jumper actually speaking. So you think this is probably going to be a flashback episode? Yeah, most uh, definitely. Well, I would the think. episode is titled "Out of the Past," which the the reason why. Everybody believes it's that is because first off the the episode title is out of the past. Uh, the second one is Cliff Jumper's back. The third one is for some reason Starscream is in command. So and um, uh, you know, yeah, he's still hanging with the Decepticons. Where you know he's ostracized mm -hmm. in the present. And they're mm -hmm. brand new. They're brand new best friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shockwave the makes people. the appearance. Oh, so. I guess we will spoil it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the spoiler section of the podcast. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, I don't... Yeah, well, the Shockwave makes an appearance. Not like it's that big of a surprise anyway, considering yeah, they, that BotCon announced it. Botcon. Like, yeah. Everybody at BotCon announced it, and then the entire freaking world knew about it. I actually didn't know about it until, like, several weeks afterwards. Someone said, I wonder when Shockwave's coming in. I'm like, Shockwave? What are you talking about? <laughs> One of my friends actually... Uh, we were watching the promo or whatever. The promo from from uh, Friday's episode popped up, and she was just like, "Oh my God, Shockwave said this!" I'm like, "Yeah, we knew about that." So she didn't know until a couple of days ago. But yeah, that one definitely. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing Cliff Jumper in action again. Um, and part of me is because of the breakdown fanatic in me. I want to have some sort of breakdown, knockout interaction, either that or just seeing the two of them would be great. I just want more breakdown. He, he was taken away from me far too early. I'm interested to see what happens when uh, you know, Silas I don't even know, what, how do we refer to him? I guess we refer to him as Silas. Um, or Silas. Uh, see what happens when him and, uh, and knockout you know, meet face to face. That's going to be Interesting. I'm seriously looking forward to that one. Most uh, especially with the most recent thing we got, and I guess to go into that, um, 
There is a recent promo video that went up for the future episodes of Transformers Prime. Mm -hmm. And it has lots of new characters in it. Uh, one of my friends was able to get a screenshot of what looked like a white robot with a, with a red uh, chevron. And a lot of Tumblr is going, wow, this is, this is going to be Prowl. This is a big thing. Um, but his car mode, there's a screen cap that shows it. There's very clearly a 38 on the door, which is like smokescreen. Yeah, which yeah. is like smokescreen. But but yet the the blue the blue and white Autobot that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's that's most definitely smokescreen. But there's another. There's actually a screenshot of a completely white Autobot with a red with a red chevron, and that one might be Prowl. That uh, everybody else is talking about that it might be Mirage or Blur or Trax. Um, or downshift. Don't forget the Omnibot that was white. Downshift, right, yeah. And it's just, I, I'm looking forward to it. There are a lot of new characters coming in to this season. Um, unfortunately, this promo, like, showed a crap ton of Autobots and not a single thing of the Decepticons, so. And being being the Decepticon, I, I, I would much prefer to learn about them than to learn about the Autobots, but that's just me. It's been a while, though, since the Autobots have gotten anyone new and interesting. And, of course, there might always be someone coming up and stepping in place for Bulkhead. Mm-hmm. Well, and considering uh, the uh, Silas Breakdown episode that's coming up in, what, three weeks? Um, that is apparently a Decepticon-centric episode. Uh, well, didn't this promo sh give us the first shot of Silas in Breakdown to see exactly how that's going to work? Did. It, well, it, it didn't... Not not a shot of him in... Well, yeah, a shot of him in Breakdown, but just like his... Like upper body, like yeah, bust. just like his head, like a bust. Just like a bust just, shot, which I'm actually looking forward to. I really like the I like the scars and the and the just the the evil, icky looking bits on his face. Which means that if I really wanted to, I could take off Breakdown's helmet and the balaclava and just like put like Frankenstein marks all over my face and be like, look, I'm Silas in Breakdown. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I agree with uh, <laughs> uh, with Gar Convoy on uh, on on YouTube. He just commented. He's he's listening, and uh, I agree with yes. him. Uh, tra Tracks should be voiced by George Takei. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of expected uh, Silas to do like a uh, somehow like transfer his personality or whatever into the robot, but. I like that they're going the, the mech suit method with it, where they're, they're kind of yeah. just making the body where they can squeeze his Silas down in it. And... Uh, I not... sort of see it sort of the, uh, um, like in the IDW comics, you, you sort of see them dismantling the, the headmasters and then leaving just like a normal looking human, but he has a couple of ports all over him. Hmm. And that sort of looks like the method they're going, where they're sort of... I don't think he can like hop out and be like, "Hey guys." No, no. But, I think uh, he was injured like too badly. Fully in the last integrating episode. his his body with you know Cybertron mm -hmm. uh, biology. I'm. I was looking forward to him again doing the whole. I'm gonna put my psyche into the thing, and I'm gonna control it via brain waves or whatever while I'm lying in the, like this terrible comatose state, and you know, hoping hoping against hope that that Knockout might be able to get a hold of him and, and bring him back to life via Cybertronian medicine as opposed to um, uh, human mechanics. Um, but uh, apparently that's not going to happen, and I'm never going to be able to see Breakdown alive and kick well, it again, which makes me sad. You never know. They, might, they could always go the, uh, you know, Silas is in his body, but Breakdown starts showing up inside of, you know, Silas and trying to take back... Mannerisms and whatever? Yeah, they could always do something like that. There are, there are you know, other ways they can go with it. That's true. Very true. Most definitely. Well, I believe that'll wrap it up this week uh, for this edition of TFYLP. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, if you, again, have any uh, questions or comments... Uh, feel free to post them on our forums on uh, geekexistence.com slash forum. Uh, sign up on there. Uh, get get some discussion going. We also have a Facebook uh, page at facebook.com slash geekexistence, as well as uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you're not already following us on Twitter, uh, you can keep up with uh, the latest news and updates from geekexistence.com and also keep up with... Uh, 
when we record and uh, broadcast live. Uh, we're going to try to do this from now on uh, because it's a little more interactive and uh, um, it's I actually think it's a lot more fun this way, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, again, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'll uh, get this uh, recording up in about a week. Uh, so uh, if you're waiting for the downloadable version, uh, you'll see it then. Um, but you won't be able to interact then. But uh, I am Weird Wolf, along with Mariah Baby. Yeah, but... Sideburn too. Um, he's he's praying. <laughs> <laughs> it is after midnight our time and insane Galvatron. <laughs> Yo. Uh, we'll see you next time on TFYLP. This is Weird Wolf. <laughs>